LinkedIn Sales Navigator is by far one of the most powerful tools in my sales arsenal, and I highly recommend it. In this episode, I get a chance to talk to Phil Gerberchak, who's going to tell us about his step-by-step -step process and how Navigator helps him not only to build pipe, but to generate more business opportunities than ever before. It is amazing. Check it out. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we have a fantastic guest. His name is Phil Gerberchak. Phil and I actually, we did a podcast a while back on his show. And uh, he's a dude that's just awesome in our network, in our, in our space. He has a great show around sales leadership. So if you're a sales leader, go ahead and check out that episode, uh, that podcast. We have a link down below so you can check it out and find all the details about Phil. In our conversation, Phil and I talk about the idea of Navigator. Why is it so important? And why it's so important to his sales stack? And how is it helping him to build pipeline? There are many of us who have tried it but have never seen the success that we would like. It's a process. It's not a one-time thing. And Phil and I break down what he does to make this work. If this is your first time listening to our show, you can come back every single time, take it to the bank, and know the show is going to help you, one, either build pipeline, or two, show you some ways of how you can convert at a higher percentage and close more deals. If you haven't done so already, please share this podcast with one other human being that can benefit from it. As we dive in, you get a chance to learn about Phil and why he's so passionate about Navigator. And then he guides us through his three-step process that you can adopt and apply starting today. Bill, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, thanks, Donald. It's great to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. And I appreciate you having me on your podcast as well. And we got to do a pitch for that. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit more about you and your show and what you do, man. Sure. Well, the Sales Leadership Show is my show. And I talk to sales leaders and people who want to be sales leaders and sales Sales reps, like, uh, you know, kind of like you and me, right? We're selling all day long. And uh, so I talk to a lot of, a lot of great people. Sometimes it's mindset, sometimes it's skill set, sometimes it's tool set as it relates. And uh, yeah, I do coaching and training and facilitation, uh, sales and, and otherwise. I love it. Um, and, and if folks want to get in con connection with you, where did I find you? I know we're going to talk about this at the end. Yeah, for sure. So easy. Go to philgerby.com, P H I L G E R B Y.com. And uh, just drop me a line. All right, guys, you got to do that. So listen, today I brought Phil on a podcast because he's as passionate about LinkedIn and specifically Navigator as much as I am. And as we are going through his process, one of the challenges we're coming across many sales professionals, uh, Phil has a great solution. I think you might find benefit to it. It's just how do, we, how do we break through the noise? How do we build pipeline? How do we get to the point where we get the right people, get in front of the right people, grab their attention and start having conversations? So Phil... I would love for you with that backdrop. Let's let's go through your process. Um, first off, why do you, why are you so passionate about Navigator, and then go through your process of how we can go about building pipe through Navigator? Sure. Well, everybody is on Navigator that is in sales, or everybody should be on uh, in sales. That's you know that's using Navigator, and that because Navigator is just such a powerful tool. LinkedIn's free version is nice. LinkedIn's Navigator version is about a hundred times better. So I strongly <laughs> recommend, and if you're on premium, it's not just a couple bucks more to get Sales Navigator with about 100 times more tools. So I really encourage you, take the time, get Sales Navigator. Um, How has it impacted your business? Yeah, well, I've found the right people. I've done outreaches much faster for mm -hmm. me because I can find the right people, whether they're first degree or second degree connection. And it's much less manual in doing that because I'm like, Doggone it. I know I'm connected with Donald. What the heck does he do? And then I get 370 Donalds and I'm like, well, that doesn't help me any. Oh, <laughs> that one Donald. That's the one I want to talk to. So yeah. absolutely. So that's that's the big help for me. Not to mention, if I get distracted from stuff, it'll remind me, oh, yeah, I already sent that person a message. It's already there. It mm -hmm. reminds me that it's there. And it gives me the ability to edit it after the fact because you know, like today I was doing some outreach and I totally screwed up what I was trying to say. I just, I had the wrong thing on the clipboard because I like to remember, I start yeah. a lot of messages the same way, like a lot of us, but I copied it and I'm like, oh, that's wrong. Well, they hadn't seen it yet. So I went and quickly edited it. So I don't look like a total tool bag. 
really important. <laughs> That's lovely. I, I like it. Um, and we'll put some more stuff like, you know, you guys can get access to to Phil when it comes to where Navigator. He's, again, passionate about it as I am. But I want to go into your process. Like, if I, if you're an individual IC listening to this episode, you're thinking, I want to use Navigator. I want to be more effective about, about, um, with it. There are three main points we talked about, Phil. You mind telling us what those three main points are? And we could take time and go in each of them for a few minutes. Absolutely. First is your profile. Hmm. Second is you got to find the right people. And third, you got to save them so that you can do something with them later. Those are the yeah. three points that I always teach and that I always coach. Well, let's go to the profile because I think this one got overlooked, but I also think it's a bit redundant to some people. And I feel that it's redundant to them, but they're still not doing it. So I, I hope that clarify because I get the same thing people tell me. Well, I know about the profile, I know about the profile, but do they? Tell me why the profile is so critical. Well, the, do you is the question, right? Do you yeah. actually take the time to craft a profile every time you change positions, every time you get promoted, every time something new is offered in your organization? So here's the thing, right? Your profile starts with your head. Got to get your head on straight. So that means your header graphic. It means your headshot. Does it look like you or you from 50 years ago? And your headline. Who do you help? How do you help them? Really simple in there. I can tell you, if you're really obvious in that headline, for instance, I was working with a recruiter a couple of weeks ago, they're hiring for one specific hard to find position. Well, change your headline to say mm -hmm. recruiting for that very hard to find position. Because yeah. if people see that, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I know now why Phil is reaching out to me. Makes perfect yeah. sense. So we get or those. Perhaps, you know, the other thing is that it could also help other people who maybe, um, you know, who could recommend you to somebody else as well because of the simple fact that it's clear That's that right. what, you're, what you're looking for. Yeah, being referable is one of the most overlooked things about LinkedIn. You want to mm -hmm. be referable because if people can share you, well, heck, you're going to be a lot more apt to get business because a recommendation from Donald is much more powerful than just you finding something in search. So let's not yeah. forget about that, right? That referability, really important, which is why you need those three. Second yeah. thing that you need is the full colorness of your profile, right? The full colorness. What do I mean? Well, featured something, featured it could be an opt in, featured could be a study, could be a blog post, could be a video. Now, know that most people aren't going to click it, but it stops the scroll. Mm -hmm. If you look at your LinkedIn profile, it's so black, white, and navy because those are LinkedIn's <laughs> colors. And God bless LinkedIn, they're beautiful colors. But I, yeah. can I be different than that? So I encourage you, friends, take a look at your profile and how can you add color? Well, that's your featured. Now you can do that per position as well. So you got featured two items only because any more than that, it starts to wrap and people aren't going to see it anyway. Mm -hmm. Same on each position. Now, I'm not telling you to go back and fix that position from 14 years ago, but I am telling your current position, add some rich media. You can click on that and add that. And along with that, LinkedIn is now saying, so what skills are valuable with this position? Well, yeah. tell it. Tell it what skills are valuable. Now, not just skills like sales, but what skills do your prospects and your customers value about that mm. position? If you're in the education space, do they value education? If you're in the IT space, do they value that you're good at cloud computing, that you understand Azure? that you understand something like that, right? Do you, do you understand? I'm not telling you that you have to be an expert, but a few people clicking that little button that says, oh yeah, Phil is good at that. Well, that's gonna go a long way because people are gonna see that. And they're gonna be like, oh wow, this isn't just a typical salesperson. Yeah. So you know, there I, you go. So, I, I, go, so I, I think all of those are, and I feel all of those are very good um, as well, like you're sharing, like the, the, that, the top part there, the header is one that I find is often overlooked where salespeople will keep the name of their company that it may not be a huge name and also like their roles. And I'm like, it's so redundant. LinkedIn does it as default, but I could see if you're a sales account executive, I could see that down below and your company name is literally right there next to the header anyways. So unless you're saying you're like a, you know, ex Google employee or something like it's going to be big ex Qualtrics, like it's not necessary to be able to put that. Um, so I really love that. And then the banner, your profile banner. Sometimes I find that 
you know, folks just have like a random stuff up there. It's a free advertisement. You can take anyone can take advantage of Canva and put something there like you have, like you said, at the bottom. So I, I love it. And uh, the rich imagery as far as those colorfulness, adding some more assets to your roles, current roles. I like that. Um, good stuff there. Thanks. Um, why is that going to be so important to a prospect? You know, we talked about it a little bit at the top, but this now when I have a profile this complete, so to speak, how does that make an impression over one that doesn't have that um, in your in your opinion? Well, in my experience, I see, first experience. of all, yeah, if, first of all, you show up first in search. If your profile is complete, right, if it's 100% done, you're going to show up ahead of those people that are not. It's also why you should add connections to people that you work with. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if the prospect is looking at yours and many people have people also viewed, turn that off, by the way, people also viewed, right, turn that mm -hmm. off. If they go to somebody else's profile and their profile is better or more relevant or they have an asset in their featured section that actually helps a problem, well, now they're going to be the person that they talk to, that they accept calls from, that they accept in-mails from, that they accept email from, that they accept a connection request from. So in my experience, the more that you ha show that you're part of the solution, not part of the problem of too many salespeople calling me, you mm -hmm. stand a much better chance of standing out and actually getting a response. I love it. So that's the power of the profile. Number two. No, now I, I look yeah. good. I, I'm fresh and so clean. I'm going out of town. Phil, I'm going out tonight. <laughs> I want to go find people. How do I find the right people now? Well, this is where Navigator comes yeah, in. Yeah, so this is where Navigator <laughs> comes in, friends. There's as almost as many features for search in Navigator as there are in Recruiter. I want you mm. to think about this. Think of Navigator as you are a recruiter looking for the right person. So you can add in how long have they been there? What's their seniority level? What is their job title, past places they've worked? You can narrow this down because I believe that finding one person is way more important than finding a million people. One more time for the folks in the back or those that are doing dishes and didn't hear that. Yeah, one is greater than one million. Really Why? easy. Why? Well, if I find one of the right person, well, I can find two of the right person. I can find three of the right person. And, and frankly, I don't have time to, to uh, prospect a million people. If I get a million people in my in my net, I'm going to be like, holy crap, mm -hmm. that's really, uh, uh, I can't mm -hmm. lift that up. But instead, if I get five or 10 of the right people with this search, and then using Navigator, I can save that search. Now, every time someone meets that criteria, boop, you get a little pop. And you get a new person, new, little new fish in your net. You don't even have to go fish for any more. Boop, you get another one. So now you get 10, 12, 20, 50. Now, take yeah. the time. Prospect those. How many of the just right people do you need to be able to fill your pipeline? I don't know, yeah. two, five, 10, 20, no more than a hundred. You need the, the right people, not just people, but the right people. Now go get them. Your pipe is full now. Go make those calls, make those outreaches. Once you're done, sure, do another search. Save that search. Really important. Now you can do this free. You can do it free, but holy cow, <laughs> does it take time? Because you have to save pretty much every little profile, yeah. put them somewhere, or you do the search and you save this, you know, 800 character string URL. And sometimes mm -hmm. it actually comes back and you'll get that. And sometimes it doesn't. So again, I would recommend that you use Navigator to do this because it's just so much more effective. So you mentioned this idea again of that list of contacts. Um, I, I feel that... And I'm speaking for myself as a salesperson. I know I've always look at the the numbers like bigger is better, right? If I can get, if I'm getting 10 people, man, it'd be great if I can get 50 of them. Um, but the problem with that is that the numbers don't necessarily always correlate towards success. And I see this people uh, with folks that I go through Navigator with them when they're updating Navigator or they're building out a list and they're like, oh man, there's only like 50 people. Go back to your point. It's like, that is money. That's 50 criteria that you, 50 specific individuals that has a higher probability of you connecting than the 150 or 200 or 2000 contacts. Like we don't want that many. It just makes it so much more difficult to be able to really focus and to hone in on those accounts. Yeah, absolutely. I want you to think about this, my friends. Mm -hmm. If you search for recent job changes, mm -hmm. people in the last 90 days that changed jobs 
they typically, that's when they get the money to spend. Mm -hmm. They get promoted, they get a new job, they move to a new company. That is one search feature that is gold on LinkedIn, Sales Navigator. That is gold. Also, LinkedIn people with recent activity, did they act, mm -hmm. are they actually alive on LinkedIn? Another yes. gold feature. Because I can go out, I can find on the free version, all these people. I get this massive list of 100,000 people. Okay, fantastic. Have they ever used LinkedIn before since setting up their profile? <laughs> That's often a question that people ask. And with the yeah. free version, we just frankly don't know. So up and up and it up the navigator is really helpful for that. Yeah, um, I, I like the idea of that safe search. How often do you go back in and look at your searches? Because you might say, I got 50 people on this last search when I did a search. Is this something that you get, uh, you, you'd go back in on regular or do you get wait on the notification from LinkedIn? Hey, new people added to the search. What, what, are, what are your thoughts, ideas on that? Well, I would want to make a search that's good enough that I can get through it in about a week. And then want to make another search. But here's the thing. If I get that little blurb that says, hey, look, Phil, three more people, three more people in your search. Well, go ahead. Take the time. Look at those three. So you don't have to go in all the time. Now, that being said, if it's been a month, you should go in at least once a month. Clean up your filters. Did people change mm -hmm. jobs? What other things are in that filter? Right? Because just because you're out there hunting for shark doesn't mean that there are just sharks in there. You could get some shrimp. We can get some tuna fish, maybe some ma some mahi mahi, all sorts of good stuff in our in our fishing in our fishing net. So we got to make sure that we find those regularly. I would go in there no less frequently than a month, probably every two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. Um, so I'm going in there regularly every two weeks. I'm going to take a look at it. I'm seeing what's going on in there, and then I'm also um, you know really really focusing on those those individuals what are you doing with your process as you make contact with those people you mentioned some stuff about in mail or sending messages how are you taking those people um and i know we have one more step but what what's your cadence is so cadence so let's start at the end my goal is to get them off of linkedin let's mm -hmm. be really clear my goal is to Amen. get them off of linkedin so what's my cadence so i might try an open message first because with Sales Navigator, I can open mail anybody that has an open profile. That's not everybody, but I would try it first. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I'm going to try a connection request. I'm going to look for one of my uh, three eyes, right? I'm going to look for something in common. Maybe they both know you. They, they know you. I'm going to say, hey, how do you know my friend Donald C. Kelly? If they actually know you, they're going to probably accept my connection. So that's one eye. Mm -hmm. The second eye is what's some insight? Either I can provide insight to them. So I see as the head of IT that one of your biggest challenges uh, this year is migrating to cloud computing. Is that a challenge for your organization? Or yeah. asking them, I see that you're, you know, that you're certified in Azure. Um, how are you seeing that mig that that uh, migration happening? Ask a mm. question, right? Ask for some insight. And then the last one is harder, but that's interested or interesting. So interested, I might, again, ask a question. I scroll to the bottom of their profile, and I see that they follow an influencer that I also learn from. Maybe for me, it might be one that I've had on my podcast. Maybe I see that they follow you, Donald. And let's pretend that we're not just connected, but I also follow you, and I do. But, I mean, as a connection, right? Let's say Gary Vaynerchuk, good example, right? I might say, yeah. hey, Donald, did you see that recent article that Gary wrote about X, Y, or Z? And because mm. Gary is so prolific, and most influencers are, they write – tons and tons of content, they yeah. probably miss that piece of content. And even if they didn't, there might be something there. So asking a question or providing uh, something interested that you're interested in, in about them. Hey, I see that uh, you posted something about this and I'd love to talk about that. But then here's the miss. And this is the big miss for a lot of folks is make the first call actually about that live connection. But what you just talked about, right? You've got to talk about that. Now I'm not telling yeah. you that that is the the only thing you talk about, but I'm telling you, refer back to it. That's my cadence, right? So I get that, mm. and then I tr and then hopefully they accept, and then I'm trying to talk about something there, either in a message because they accepted it, in an email because their email's there, or could be that I get them on a quick phone call because they share their email, and I mention that. From yeah. there, now they see me not as a threat, but as someone who actually keeps their promises, someone who isn't just going to be salesy.
That's really important, right? Because we want to stay in that relationship zone of softness until we determine and we earn the right to ask more questions. I love the uh, the off LinkedIn plan. That's one of the things I find very effective for when, in our outreach. And I also love that you're talking about um, the uh, it, it makes it you know diffusing the threat, um, so to speak. Like if you're if you can apply some of these concepts, you're going to obviously start a conversation, engage with you, and then you're no longer seen as the seller that's trying to take my time. It, it's somebody that you know provide relevant uh, information that could benefit me and help me so therefore i'm 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 granting you access to that and i i love that um, love that that approach and that's often on um, the profile let's be clear right that's a callback yeah. possibly to the profile of by the way you know i i've got this awesome uh, article it's it's just a page long would it be okay mm -hmm. if i share that with you could be yeah. really easy, really simple, right? And it could be on the profile as a lead magnet, but that could be something then that I share directly with any of my contacts. Because once we're connected, I'm no longer trying to get you in everybody's bucket. I'm trying to get you into my bucket. The first point of uh, going back to the conversation, starting a conversation with what you discussed um, or you connected with, I, I think that's also brilliant. Um, I've used that a lot. And I, I find sometimes, because I think it, it makes it feel disingenuous when somebody tells me, hey, I love this episode. It was great. We had a good conversation about that. And then we go do our first call and it's just kind of like, hey, Donald, or the first outreach, I want to tell you about my service. It's like, bro, if you really enjoyed that, let's you know bring that back up. Like that conversation with Phil was absolutely brilliant. The idea that Phil shared with this totally changed the way that I do outreach. I actually booked three appointments. So I appreciate you sharing that episode. Like now I'm like, oh man, you make me feel so good. And that, you know, that conversation with Phil. And it also shows that, yeah, you really did mean that stuff from LinkedIn or from that message that you sent me. You know what I mean? Yeah, abs well, absolutely. I mean, as salespeople, we have to be truth tellers. We have to keep our promises. Yep. When we don't, well, we look bad, whether they're big promises, little promises, whether it's being on time, whether it's doing what we say we'll do. I mean, just simple stuff. But I'll tell you what, a lot of a lot of folks, uh, not just salespeople, right? A lot of people, they don't keep their promises. So be mm. be the exception, not the rule. Keep your promises. Keep your promises. I want you to, t the last bucket, you kind of mentioned stuff to this already, but you mind going a little bit more deeper into it? Yeah, and the bucketization. Yeah, I, I call it bucketizing because honestly, tagging and all this just makes me want to throw up, right? So I call it bucketizing. I'll keep the fish analogy. I've got a, mm -hmm. I've got a bucket of fish and that fish is all smelt. And I've got another bucket of fish, and these are all trout. And I've got another bucket of fish, and these are all mahi-mahi. Now you say, well, Phil, what does that have to do? Well, how I prepare each of those fish is different based on the size of the fish, based mm. on the, the type of meat that that fish has, based on whether on. they're saltwater or whether they're freshwater fish. And I'm not even a fisher person, right? I'm not even a fisher person. But I can tell you I know enough about that to think now, okay, now how does that work? in Sales Navigator. Mm -hmm. So now I've got, I set up a search. It's got 27 of the best people. Now I can broaden the aperture. I can say, you know what? I first did for 25 to 100, or 20 to 100 in my search. How many people were there? And I had 27. Well, you know what? I wonder if I went from 101 to 500, how many more I'd get? Because, you know, yeah. my target account list is up to 1,000. Okay, sure. so I get another 43 people. Well, stop, pause, pause, pause. 27 and 43 is 70. That's enough to last me. That's enough fish for two weeks, maybe even a month for me. Okay, yeah. cool. Now I wait. I save those searches. And now later on, I realize, you know what? It's not just the CIO that makes those decisions. It's also the head of network operations. So I change, I keep that search, but now I just modified just a little bit and I put in the head of network operations and the job title, or I might put network engineer or network manager or so, whatever, right? I'm looking, looking, looking. I don't know the exact search that I'm going to come up with. And bang, I find another good one with another 30 and I save that search. So now I've got three good buckets that I can just modify from, that I can just evolve, that I, and I know what to do with them. I know what's important to them. I know what challenges they have. So if I can do those three things that we talked about, Donald, my goodness gracious, 
I'm going to be way more successful. And I'll tell you what, the folks that I coach, the folks that I work with, they're so much more successful because they don't feel overwhelmed. These are just yeah. things they can do every single day. And these searches, you set them up and then you look at them two, every two to four weeks. You see what's there. You get some new ones. Go back in. See if you got new fish. Is that a good one? Nope. Throw it out. That's a good one. Okay, cool. I got to reach out. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah. Your profile is optimized. It's, pro, it's set up to be able to bring people in or grab people's attention. Number two, you're, find, you're searching and you're finding the right type of individuals. And then three, you're putting them into buckets. And as you're doing these outreach, you can obviously update that um, accordingly. It's brilliant. I love it. Very simple. Anyone could do this. Phil, if there's one major thing you want everyone listening to this episode to walk away with, it's 20 minutes jam-packed here. Um, but if there's one major piece of advice from this episode you want them to leave with, what's that major piece of advice? Three words. Be okay. more human. Focus on being human. All your outreaches, all your stuff. If you wouldn't do it to somebody sitting right next to you, why the heck are you doing it online? Instead, be more human. And by using Sales Navigator, using some of the tactics we talked about today, you have less people, so it's easier to be more human. Love it. Phil, again, for folks who maybe uh, they forgot at the very top because they're so busy writing all your stuff down and getting excited, how do they get in touch with you, man? Yeah. LinkedIn? Is yeah, LinkedIn, remote. of course, is always great. You spell Gerbyshack, you find me, G-E-R-B-Y-S-H-A-K. <laughs> and if you want to check out my website, it's Phil Gerby, P-H-I-L-G-E-R-B-Y.com. You can find me there. Phil, man, I appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today. I appreciate your wisdom. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Donald. Hey, that was Phil Gerberchak. Go ahead and connect with him. You have a link down in the show notes to connect with him on LinkedIn. Tell him you heard him here on the Sales of Angeles podcast with Donald T. Kelly. I appreciate it. And if I've not connected with you yet, man, what are you waiting for? Send me a connection request, man. It'll be greatly appreciated. Go to, the, go to LinkedIn.com and just uh, search, search for Donald C. Kelly and let's connect. I, I would love it and would be greatly appreciated. Um, don't get a chance to talk to you all a lot. You get a chance to talk to me and I want to be able to fix that. As always, I want you to find more of your ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to build pipeline and close twice as many deals. Most importantly, I want you to raise your level of thinking, go out and do big things. Mm -hmm.